Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Old Faithful. I am your host, uh, Matt Trask. Thank you to Perfect Wave. Uh, thank you to Carissa again at Black Hills Blend. How's your coffee, DJ? It's pretty good. I am super, super, super excited. Did I forget to thank it? Thank you for watching this show. Um, thank my guests for being on the show. Your name is DJ Tomac. DJ Tomac, yes. Nice to meet you, nice DJ. Nice to meet you, too. And Today we have the very first handmade guitar on the show. So, your name is DJ Tomac, we've established that already. Yes. Tell us the short version about you with emphasis on your entertainment career. Well, I started back in 1967 when I was in high school and been playing professionally ever since. Are playing lead guitar and singing, yes. Lead guitar and singing, okay. Yeah. Uh, with the same band most of the time, or? Um, no, they always changed yeah. members, but uh, I was on the road for 13 years playing six to seven nights a week. Wow, yeah. that's, we'll that's a lot. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it's fun, and that's how you, how you learn your chops. Oh, absolutely, uh, yeah. Well, we have, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited about this. Go ahead, DJ, and tell us all about this guitar right here. Okay, this guitar I built 30 years ago, I completed it 30 years ago this month at uh, Roberto Van School of Luthery in Phoenix, Arizona. I built three guitars. I built two electrics and this acoustic, which is my pride and joy. It's a Honduras, Honduras mahogany, back and sides, Spanish cedar top, with uh, a bunch of uh, rosewood and maple and rosewood bridge. How long, how many hours approximately did it take? Was this your third guitar or your second or your first? I built all three of them at the same at time. At the same time. At okay. the same time. Just the neck block in there, inside the guitar where the neck attaches to, it took two days. Two days. Because yeah. after, that was the first piece of wood we got. We right. We cut our neck block mm -hmm. and, we, and automatically R Roberto Van be became called Roberto Van School of Sanding. Because <laughs> uh, everything is hand sanded, mm -hmm. everything's hand sanded. Nothing, okay. nothing done with the machine, so everything's to four hundred grit. Okay, and and then you start putting it together. It's, I would say uh, one solid month. Glue and dry, glue and dry, and sand and glue and dry. Well, for the guitar nerds who watch this show, what kind of glue did you use? Nothing but tight bond. I don't know if I mentioned, I don't think I did, that you are the luthier here at Perfect Wave Production. Yes, I've, I've been getting some, some calls. People come in and I've done uh, some fret jobs, refret jobs okay. on, on strats. And I did a refret job on a wonderful old 1967 Telecaster. Oh, wow. Now, or, right now it's kind of on call. When, okay. they, when they get a call and they are setting up a shop here. I'm okay. going to get my workbenches in here. And, well, back to this guitar, which will be a fine example of the workmanship this man does. Just visually, uh, what we can see, uh, you told me this was a bone nut. That's a bone nut. Did you hand cut that? Oh, yes. From a blank, or did you go out to a bone pile? You know, I don't remember. I okay. think it was from a blank. But, okay. But in my work now, I got... Whenever, whenever we cook a roast at home and the right. bone's big enough, I keep the bone. You do. I keep the bone okay. and I cut it into pieces, and I can make saddles or or, or nuts. Okay. Uh, so if you want a hand built guitar, if you want DJ to hand build you a guitar, you could buy a cow, have it butchered, <laughs> yeah. save the roast, and you would know where your knot came from on your guitar. <laughs> Moving down from there, um, we have a zero fret. I have always liked guitars with a zero fret, so that is cool to me. Moving down from there, um, somewhat unusual, and really the way you can tell this handmade guitar, if you couldn't already, is we have a rosewood pickguard. Yes. Which is highly unusual. Brazilian really. rosewood. Well, you turn it around for us. Okay. Uh, so this... Is this a three-piece neck or is this a skunk stripe? That is a three-piece neck. Okay. Yes. We take a, a piece of, uh, that's mahogany, Honduras mahogany. Right. You take a piece of mahogany, a board, you split it in half, and then you glue them together. This piece wants to warp that way, this okay. piece wants to warp that way. Mm -hmm. It's called equal opposite grain. Okay. So it keeps its structure. Okay. And then, then the, 
then that's glued in there with this piece and the, of course the truss rod lays in on top of that. Is that a book match back? That is a book match back, yes. Okay. In other words, book match meaning equal opposite grain again. Right, yeah. Tell us about the binding. Okay. The binding is, that's uh, uh, Honduras, not uh, Brazilian rosewood binding. Okay. And the little strip in there is maple. Okay. Eastern hard rock maple. Awesome. I don't know how much my my little camera is going to capture. This is truly a beautiful and obviously um, well cared for and and well played guitar. There's a volume here. Yes. Uh, what made you decide to do that? Just that is a requirement at Roberto Van. Oh. They always oh, they always make make you put a volute in there okay because how many necks have you seen broken at the peg head well it's because a volute isn't there man this is fun i am having so much fun here tell us um, about the headstock the headstock we uh, like everybody in school created their own design okay and they could do whatever they want for inlay so that's mother of pearl all right that's mother of pearl which is very toxic when you're working with it you got to wear a mask all the time oh i didn't it's know it's very that. toxic all right and then then that's uh that is turquoise dust, and those are turquoise dots. Okay. And I picked those dots up at a at a, a sale down there in Arizona when I was in school. I went to one of these big sales, mm -hmm. and I bought a whole bottle of them for like a buck. Oh. The little bitty round turquoise dots. Right. And they work good for the fingerboard. Right. And there. Do you still have some? Oh yeah. Really? I still have some dots. I must have got two or three hundred <laughs> of them, and I still have them. <laughs> We have an ebony fretboard? Yes. Well, what kind of tuners in are, are these the original tuners? I, well, those are the original. Uh, they're either Grovers or Shalers. I okay. don't remember right. for sure. Um, and then down, we're kind of just taking a tour of the guitar all right. topsy-turvy. But the purfling around the sound hole, tell us about that. This here, the rosette? Yep. The rosette is Brazilian rosewood and uh, uh, bird's eye maple. And uh, and then uh, ebony, ebony uh, ring outside ring there. And of course the that's you know, rosewood. Okay. Right. And the bridge is Brazilian rosewood. Okay. Most of us think of rosewood as a darker wood. Yeah. And it kind of depends on where the it is in the trunk of the tree. Oh. Okay. Is it, um, how many frets on this one? Been, Not counting the zero fret, I guess. I, you know, I go 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21. I did not mean to do Tw that. 21 for okay. an acoustic, that's quite a few. That is quite a few. And it joins the, uh, it joins the, the neck joins the body at the 14th, 14th fret. fret. yeah. So pretty much Martin Dreadnought specifications. Mm -hmm. I built a mold while I was in school too. That's what I used to build this guitar, okay. a mold. This was one of three of your first fret jobs. How did that go for you? Was oh, that I, difficult? It, uh, building, doing my first fret job was a, it was a challenge, but mm -hmm. once you do one, it's, it's, yeah. it's a piece of cake. Have you played this out like live or anything? Oh yeah, lots of times. It, it does not have electronics, so you'd have to mic it. It has electronics. I put an aftermarket pickup. It's a stick on internal. Okay. And to the to the end pin. Okay. Uh, plug it in, but uh, it sounds so good acoustic. Uh, SM57. Right, yeah. yeah. And that, that's just, you get your true right. natural sound. We mentioned it was a cedar top. Spanish cedar. I hope cedar. we did. Spanish yeah. cedar, yeah. Which I, uh, I happen to love cedar top acoustic guitars. Most often found on nylon string classical guitars. Mm -hmm. it's, it's rather rare to see it on a steel string. But when you find one, I love them to death. And this um, is the loudest cedar top steel string guitar I have ever heard. The people at home are not going to get to experience it's, Well, tell us about the top. The outside is uh, uh, thinner than the middle okay. for, for strength reasons. And then I also tuned the top, which they told me not to do in school. I've had a lot of people play this guitar and they say, man. Can you, and I could never duplicate it. There, there is a, uh, with anything, downhill skiing, roping, pottery, whatever, there'll be schools of thought and the debate will rage on. And there is some debate about 
tuning the top of the guitar. Um, but the proof is in the pudding, and you, you're telling me that people have told you how good it sounds. And yeah. I'm among them telling you how good it sounds. So apparently sometimes I did hear just nerding out a bit. I heard one guy say, well, he was against tuning guitars because the luthier's ears will change as they go through life. And so they'll get a different tuned guitar at 50 than they had at 20. You know, I don't know. No, an A is still an A. <laughs> Whether you're 60 or 20. <laughs> there you go. An A is still an A. That's right. I, that's, I'm glad we had this conversation because you are correct, sir. Yeah. And that's tuned to an F sharp. Okay. That's what they say to tune your guitar to is an F sharp. The top. It's tuned to an F sharp. Yeah. The guitar is tuned to E standard. Oh, oh yeah. You were telling me one more thing. This for years lived in a chipboard case. Did you make that or purchase that? The case? Yeah. Oh, I purchased that. The chipboard case when you made the guitar. Yeah. And uh, I bought it at a, I bought it at some yard sale or something for, you know, five bucks or whatever. Oh. And that's what I carried it around in for a, for years. Right. And. Then I decided, you know, I better get a good hard shell. Right. That's what it. That's what it goes in now. And so she's in her second home now. Oh yeah. Okay. Does she have a name? I forgot to ask that. Not really. No. Uh, this was. That's my emblem. Axe. Okay. A X E. Okay. That's that's my axe. Hey, don't forget my sponsorship uh, from Trask Hay LLC. Uh, one six zero five five one five zero eight five eight, um, and being as this guy is a luthier, Dan Erlewine says, "Change your strings." Oh, ladies man. and gentlemen, <laughs> Mr. DJ Tony. <laughs> sound.